Uh, okay, fellas, uh, we're moving on to uh, some money stuff. This one we're looking at compound interest. Now, you guys are in year 12, so you've seen compound interest plenty before. You would have looked at it in year 10, uh, year 11 a little bit, and now we're in year 12. Uh, so this formula is not going to be um, new to you. A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. Now, A uh, is the future value of something. P is the present value of something. Sometimes you use the word principal there. I is the interest rate, and I've, I've put it here in really bold letters, interest rate per period. This is the bit that people are going to stuff up if they stuff up anything. And N is the number of periods. Now, the, the, the number of periods is important. It's not the number of years, it's the number of periods. Now, I'm going to jump through four different questions. Those four different questions are going to find the A value, which is really simple. We're going to find the P value. We're also going to find the uh, I value. And then we're finally going to find the N value. So we've got four different types of questions. This form has got four variables, so there's four different types of questions we might be able to ask. Okay, so our first question, you invest $10,000 in a bank account for three years, compounding monthly at a rate of 8% per annum. Uh, calculate how much money you will have at the end. Okay, so this is a question where we're finding the A value. Where's my cursor gone? There it is. So A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. Now our principal is the money we start with, 10,000, times 1 plus... Now here's where it gets interesting. It says an interest rate of 8%, uh, but it's compounding monthly. So our number of periods is not, uh, sorry, our interest rate isn't going to be 8%, it's going to be 8 divided by 12. So that's going to be 0 0.08 divided by 12. That's going to be our interest rate. And uh, similarly, our number of periods. Now you're investing for three years, but it's compounding monthly. So our number of periods is not three, it's three times 12, because there's 12 months in a year. Uh, that's that's it. Just throw it in your calculator and get an answer. Uh, and you can see there that we'll end up with $12,702.37. $12,702.37. Really straightforward question. Throw it straight into the form and then you get an answer. Uh, example number two here. Um, where's my cursor? There it is. Uh, you would like to invest a certain amount today so that in five years' time you have $50,000. If the bank account compounds weekly, important information, and has an interest rate of 6% per annum, how much should you invest today? So our formula is still the same. A equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. But our difference here is that we know A, we want to have $50,000 in the future. That's our future value. We don't know what P is and then it's uh, 1 plus i to the power of n. So 1 plus i. Now the interest rate is 6%. Uh, I didn't mention it before. Make sure you express your uh, interest rates as decimals, not, percent, uh, not percentages. So that's 0 0.06, but it's compounding weekly. So we don't need our interest rate per annum, which means per year. We need it per week. So we need to divide that number by 52. And then similarly for our number of periods, we're investing for five years, but our number of periods is going to be five times 52, because they're in uh, weeks. Now, we want to know what uh, P is. Now, you can see that P times all of this. So if we want to find out what P is, we just need to take this number and divide it by all of this. Uh, so P is going to be equal to 50,000 divided by uh, 1 plus 0 0.06 over 52 to the power of uh, 5 times 52, which is um, 260. Okay, uh, put that into your calculator and we should have an answer. And it should give us an answer of $37,047.32. Uh, $37,047.32. Uh, 
and forty seven dollars thirty two. Uh, okay, moving along, this time we're going to calculate the unknown interest rate. So a man invests $20,000 for seven years in a bank compounding monthly. If the money grows to $100,000, calculate the interest rate per annum. So careful here, let's take a look at it. Uh, A equals P bracket 1 plus I to the power of N. Now when I do this, a man invests $20,000, that's our principal. Now we know we're not going to know our interest rate. N is the number of compounding periods. Now seven years monthly, so that's going to be seven times twelve. And we want the money to grow to one hundred thousand. Now I might do this in two stages so you can see what's going on. First of all, I'm going to divide by twenty thousand. So that's going to be one hundred thousand divided by 20,000 equals 1 plus i to the power of um, 84 and 100,000 divided by 20,000 that looks like it's going to end up being 5. So now we know that 5 equals 1 plus i to the power of 84. There's a few different ways you can solve this. You can use logs uh, if you want to. I'm going to use fractional powers. Now the opposite of to the power of 84 is 5 to the power of 1 on 84 equals 1 plus i. And therefore i is going to be um, 5 to the 1 on 84 uh, minus 1. Uh, let's see what we end up with. Okay, now we can see that we get an I value of 0 0.0193, 0 0.0193. I equals 0 0.0193. Now you need to stop there because you're going to make a mistake. That interest rate is not interest rate per annum. Remember that we've been compounding monthly. So that interest rate is the monthly interest rate. So if I want to know the interest per annum, I'm going to have to multiply it by 12. I per annum equals 0 0.0193 times 12. Just go back to my calculator and make that happen. Okay, and that looks like we have 23.21%. Good luck finding a bank that will give you an interest rate of 23.21%. Okay, uh, one last question here. This time we know everything, but we don't know the time. We don't know how long it's going to take. Okay, how long would it take to double your investment for $30,000 if your bank pays 5% per annum compound fortnightly? Doesn't look like we've got a lot of information, but we have enough to work with. 1 plus I to the power of N. So, how long would it take to double your investment of $30,000? So our principal, our uh, present value is $30,000. Double that, it's going to be $60,000. 1 plus, it's 5% per annum, compounded fortnightly. So that's 0 0.05 divided by 26, because there's 26 fortnights in a year. And how long would it take to double your investment? and there's our number of periods n. Okay, so 60,000 divided by 30,000. Oops, sorry, I lost my cursor there. Where's it gone? Okay, so 60,000 divided by 30,000. Obviously that's going to give me 2. 1 plus 0 0.05 over 26 to the power of n. So 2 equals 1 plus 0 0.05 over 26 all to the power of n. Now once you hear there's probably a few different ways that you can go about it. 
Uh, your equation solver, uh, you can probably shove it straight into your equation solver and solve it. I might just go a bit more of a circuitous route and take the log of both sides. Uh, so we've got log base 10 2 and log of all of this rubbish. Now you remember your third log law, that n can come out the front. Plus 0 0.05 over 26 uh, log 2. Now that's n times all of that. So we can divide by that now. Log 2 divided by, keep scrolling down a little bit, um, all that rubbish again, over 26 equals n, uh, oops, we've got a bracket there, put that into your calculator and you should end up with some kind of answer. Now that gives us an n of 360.78. And you really need to stop here and think about what you've done again. How long will it take to double your investment to $30,000 if your bank pays 5% per annum compounded fortnightly? That 360 uh, represents the number of fortnights. So if we want to know the number of years, because 360 fortnights doesn't really mean anything to me, oops, years, it's going to be equal to 360.78 divided by uh, 26 because there's 26 of those in a year. That gives us 13.87 years. Okay, let's stop and think about that question. How long will it take to double the investment of $30,000 if your bank pays 5% per annum, compounded fortnightly? It's going to take 13.87 years. Okay, uh, this entire thing has been compound interest, how to find all four of A, P, I and N depending on what you're working on. Uh, try some questions, go through it nice and slow, take your time and make sure you talk to me when you have any problems with uh, what we're working on. Alright, thanks guys.